energy guideline uh, uh, update. We're ready to roll that out as part of our strategic plan. And finally, a Neo City uh, project update. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Blake, our Director of Planning, to go through the middle school redistricting. Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> So basically, just real quick, we want to remind you that Harmony Middle School will be opening August of 19, so we will be going through redistricting this year. So on the slide, it's um, nothing new for you other than changing the name of the school. So we're already in the middle of the process. This evening, you'll actually be approving the calendar so we can open up the process officially. The schools will set their um, redistricting committees within the first two weeks of school starting so that we can be ready to roll for our meetings. Our meetings are going to be on September 11th, September 25th, and if necessary on October 9th. And for right now we have the public hearing planned for November 6th at 6 p.m. We do see Narcusi Middle, Neptune Middle, St. Cloud Middle School being impacted. And the only reason we have Harmony Community School on the list is their actual attendance zone boundary will not be changing, but we'll officially be changing them back to a K-5. So we need to do that through an official vote, changing their grades from K-8 to K-5 at the end of the process. We're going to change their name, or just leave the community school. I thought you wanted to leave it the same. I think so. I think that we had that discussion briefly a while I th back. I think the board had some discussion about that, and we had said it would stay the same. Okay. Unless you tell K -8, us different. K-8, K-5, still the community school. Yeah, yeah. That's the words. Any questions on that? If not, I'll move on to West Side Analysis. Good. So we had previously received approval to shop for transportation properties. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about that, but more, you know, with the expansive growth that we have in the West Side, some of the options that we're looking at. So we'll, we'll be looking for your guidance through this segment. Yeah, I just want to point on the West Side, I just want to point something out. The, um, in Celebration, there's a Celebration trash hauler in there. They actually park their cars at a storage facility. They pay 150 bucks a month for, for I don't know if we want to consider something like that, if that would work for us or not, but. We'd be happy to look at it. I mean, if they just, I don't know if they have enough space for us. What Sean's actually doing is looking at where we could park buses for at school sites for free. Okay. Yeah. But to give us more proximity and, and so reduce some of the windshield time. They got to go there. Parking. Celebration High School's got a big parking lot. Yeah. So, um, as we've been out this year doing our track development update, um, which we do on an annual basis, and we're starting to look at the additional growth, even with the expectation of a large number of vacation villas coming in on the west side and the short-term rentals, we're still seeing a significant number of development that's already been approved. So at this time, we are expecting in five years for the student enrollment at west side K-8 to be at 2,583. So this has definitely pushed this school to the top of our list. So, um, for lack of a better word, I'm going to say we're aggressively shopping for property on the west side of town right now um, in hopes of finding a piece of property to the east of Point Santa Boulevard. And our intention would be to take west side, cut its boundary in half. Everybody to the east would go to the new school, and everybody west of I 4 would stay at the existing What's the budget for land? west side. Um, Typically what we're budgeting right now is about 150 an acre, but when we know when we get over on the west side of town, we're looking at a little more. The most typical part when we get to that side of town is they want market rate, and we are bound to appraisal, but we are eyeing a couple of sites right now. We've reached out and touched base with those property owners as of this week, and hopefully at the next meeting I'll have more information how to many, share. How many acres? Um, one acre, one site is 40 acres. And then another one, if that one falls through, the other one is 30 acres. You know, there's a piece of property that's been available forever at the corner of Siesta Lago and Point Santa Boulevard. It is the northeast corner. Yes, it, we've reviewed it's it. Own, I know that there's usually a reason for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. about, about two thirds of it is wet and submerged. Right, and it would be very expensive to develop. Need, but is it? Would it cost you? less to buy 40 acres at $150,000 an acre than it would be to fill that 26 acres? The corner lot that we're referring to will only hold an elementary school, so that would require us to also find a middle school. Okay. Because yeah. when you break the K-8, you'll need both yeah, sites they got at 20, that point. 26 acre site. Yes. yes. Okay. And we've had such success with properties that are low. Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> well we've got a lot of properties that are low in Osceola County. Dr. Just Pink. saying, you Mr. Mr. Miller, that with all due respect. Well, there's a reason the St. Cloud High School property was given to the school district that a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. not to get us off track. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Keep Rhonda. Going. So basically, um, if the current site with, that we're looking at was to um, go through and we could bring that back to you, 
we would like to open that school in 22-23 and Sarah's looking at the budget. We currently have an elementary school in the budget and we would just be asking that that be converted to a K-8 and we would need to find the difference in the elementary budget and the middle school budget which Sarah is working uh, is on. Yeah. No, it's a That's different elementary. <laughs> And then off of that, we would find impact for Floor Ridge Elementary, Reedy Creek Elementary, Kissimmee Middle, and of course West Side. And the numbers on the PowerPoint, that would be the numbers today. So that does not include any growth coming into those areas. Um, just the next slide is to remind you that we um, are continuing to look for sites for West Transportation. Um, I currently have a site that I'm looking at um, near the Medieval Times in Kissimmee. But I've also had a developer call in South Kissimmee and tell me that they may have 15 acres that we can look out, out there as a thirsty. So the one thing I did want to know with that developer is instead of a cash purchase, would the board be open to them doing an impact fee credit, but not at that particular location, but at another location within the district? So they're willing to do maybe impact fee credits in lieu of a cash purchase if that would assist us. It just wouldn't be in that exact location where the site is. I'm going to spend it on this building's going. Yeah. I got a question, Dr. Pace. The conversation we had just a little while, why wouldn't we want to use Celebration High School parking lot? They got a lot of space there. We are going to be utilizing yeah. it. Oh, this in addition to that? Yes. Oh, We're looking okay. at that. Okay, I mis misunderstood. I'm sorry. And the key with the West Transportation Facility is to be able to get a full bay and service center out there because we're running into that significant windshield time that we spoke to everyone back um, March of 2017. So the cost to bring those buses from the west side of town back into Simpson Road and to travel back has become pretty exorbitant. So we're continuing to look for that. And then the next slide. Okay, so There's actually a duplicated West uh, transportation slide. So apologize for that. And that was supposed to be uh, some East transportation analysis that we had previously shared with you. But we'll forward the entire uh, West Side analysis uh, presentation to you so that slide. you have yeah. the information. So, when we came to you last year about the East Side of town, we were looking at the Nora Tyson Road site, and it was going to be half a charter school and half transportation. That opportunity did not come to fruition due to some kickback that the city of St. Cloud was receiving on a transportation facility going into that location. So right now we are working with um, Center Lake um, at the end of Rummel Road. They are entertaining maybe letting us put the transportation facility inside of their commercial aspect part of their community. And I'll have more information on that in the next two weeks. And that would also be an impact fee credit instead of a cash purchase up front. I mean, it's really the city of St. Cloud that wants us off Michigan Avenue anyway, right? Right. So. Well, it wasn't the city of St. Cloud didn't push back North Tyson. It was the residents pushing back to the city of Kissimmee, especially um, on the Lake Lizzie extension. Yes. And they also want us off 10th and Virginia where our maintenance facility is Of course, is they want located. you off so, everywhere. Right, we could, we could move that to the <laughs> transportation facility yeah. in St. Cloud. They want us off there. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Real quickly, I brought this up. I don't want to get us off topic. I, I want to just bring this up because I <clears> brought this up with, with Ms. Blake earlier. Um, high school capacity, I know we're, we're, we're tied on the west side now. We don't have to discuss it. I just threw this out there. Do we need to start looking at some smaller magnet type high school situations, like an arts themed high school, Neo City choice type schools? A choice school to help with some capacity. Yeah, and, and, and business a business Mr. academy. Yes, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I know we've discussed that before, but. Is that is that the road we're going with building the facilities for cheaper talking 500 a thousand students or 1500 students or something and try I mean is that a, is that a possibility I mean I just I mean I don't I can't even think of myself where there's 50 60 really? acres there's on the west there, side there's some on points are we gonna build a six-story building and then I'm being told that 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 just makes everything really crazy when you go above three floors is, is that, that correct? correct so like fourth yes. floor up it gets more expensive yes. okay, um, I want to make sure I don't so, speak today that is something I'll need to do some research so into, sooner Mr. or later I don't want to give you we're gonna have to go up or <laughs> or well, out I don't know there's two there's two locations you've got um, on right. Pointiana Boulevard there's a big chunk of like brown what are you laughing at? there's that by the firehouse over there also there's a um, 
There's a, um, a Publix that closed on the corner of International Drive and 192. Kind of like the Kmart conversion was in it. I mean, that, that's been sitting there empty. They'd make it a sweetheart. Deal. The Century City? Yeah. The county put a deposit down on yeah. that for the sheriff's station yes. for a oh, really? life facility. Oh, really? That must have just happened recently. And it did. In the last 30 days, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Because we were looking that at that. That ship was so. Okay. Does but anybody, Mr. Weishire, you got something? Yes. You brought up something that's so special to me. Um, we should be talking with all the developers about building those schools within their communities and setting aside five to ten yeah. acres for these magnet high schools like a Neo City or a School for the Arts. Um, they want those draws into their community anyway. Those are unique opportunities and we can take a very innovative approach to how we do it, whether it's impact fee credits or um, it's even a uh, P3 is something that you and I have talked about in a number of different conversations. So um, I think our opportunity to do that, first of all, I'm all in favor of it. I think it's the right approach. We've had this conversation more than you probably want us to. Um, but that's what we should really be looking at is having conversations with development and saying, we came to the table with you and partner with you straight out of the gate. We can build this or we can work with you to develop this in your community and now you have an additional draw. That's the real win for us. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, sir. Energy? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Rhonda. Okay, Thank well, you. Mark is made. Oh, there he is. Yeah, okay, just, I'll turn it over to Mr. Walker. Well, we'll, we'll keep this very short. Uh, one of our goals is to reduce overall energy consumption and uh, we're partially doing that through our rollout of the new energy guidelines. It, they're very short and sweet. Um, any savings that we uh, we obtain, we're going to share with the schools through discretionary okay. budgets. It don't matter. The, the the meat of it is we're going to change the the baseline run times for our schools for eight hours for elementary schools, nine hours middle and K eight schools, ten hours for high schools. That will be the baseline. Of course, there are going to be auditoriums, there are going to be gymnasiums that are rented out for things that'll. It'll be beyond those parameters, but generally speaking, we're going to try to limit those those hours of operation. What so is it currently? It's all over the place. So what is it? <laughs> it's literally all over the place. I got a question. So, in order to accomplish some of our energy goals, are we going to also tell um, staff at schools you can't bring in your own coffee maker, your own toaster oven, your own microwave? Your we own do that now. Yes. That's part How, of is it enforced? Energy. It, is there an energy? Um, is there an energy champion like there's a health champion on campuses that we want to incent based on the money they save? Long term, we would like to establish green school champions, ambassadors at each of the schools that would oversee energy conservation, recycling, and other green school items as well. If we can, but relative to energy savings, if, if we give them a target of saving X. And they say X plus one, it give them half of some of that. Savings. Absolutely. We need to incentivize them to, to That's get them motivated. It's the only way to really get uh, the bang for your bucks is to incentivize. Compensation. We're, we're all for that. Uh, the temperature settings, uh, we're going to, when, when we're in occupied modes, and most of the time we're in the, eight, we're in the, the cooling mode and at 72 to 78. When we're in unoccupied modes, we're not going to shut the, the units down. We're going to have a set point for 80, 86 degrees. That, that allows still some, some comfort while your uh, custodian, custodial crew is there. And to remove the humidity so right, we don't if have you, the other sure, quality you, issues. Sure, sure. I'm going to say you know, that your custodian's probably going to complain about 86 degrees well, <laughs> inside of a building again, with no again, air movement. It'll. Uh, I, I mean, if, if if it saves a bunch of money, yeah. yeah, if, if, yeah. Again, that that would probably be in sometime in the morning when it finally gets to those setbacks. And, and, still and in fact, just because it steps back to 86, that's uh, not going to happen right after the run. Most period. of our It'll computer rooms some time are MDFs and IDFs. Yeah, have got split minutes. systems. Okay, okay. And okay. that, but At that's a great that. point, and that's one of the reasons why we advocate <laughs> for setbacks and not for shutting down completely. Because if, if you've got the setback there, even these split systems that are in that are protecting our, our valuable assets weren't intended to ha handle all the load. Right. So it, it helps if the AC is, is at a reasonable setback. Do we have some? Do we have a system in place also that if a computer monitor isn't used for 15 20 minutes, automatically puts it in sleep mode, so we're not paying for that also? Well, now that we're not using CRTs anymore, it's not as big a deal. Okay. But okay. Uh, we had a district policy at one time to shut off all computers, and that really hasn't been okay. going on now. With with all of our new computers that we're getting, they're very they're, most of them are you know Energy Star, so they you know they monitor if you're not using it, they shut down anyway. So. Okay. 
but in terms of championing behavior changes as well, we are going to start doing that very much like we used to do, but in a more more effective strategy. So that's part of what we're doing. Thank you. Okay. Just wanted to get you up to speed there. Thank you, Mark. Okay. So our next item is the Neo City Academy project update. We'll ask Gilbane Construction to join us at the table. Uh, so we uh, continue, remain on the fast track. Uh, this is a project that moved through the design phase very quickly. Our uh, design professional is, is here as well, Little Architects, and they have achieved their objectives. They were able to hold the schedule, issue design documents, uh, construction documents, and we have since gone out to bid. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Eric Dodson so he can pr uh, get us up to speed. Good afternoon. Um, just uh, did want to give you an update on the on the Neo City project, as uh, Mark had mentioned. Um, little did uh, get the documents turned over in time, which was the beginning of July, as uh, as they had promised, and uh, we did put it immediately out to bid. We advertised for the bids on July 8th, the 11th, and the 15th, so we did uh, put it out to bid three, uh, or not put it out to bid, but advertised three times. Uh, we held an outreach event. Uh, we coupled that with the um, with the foundation. Uh, so that way they were able to eat some, meet some of our vendors as well and had a little bit of a partnership there. So that worked out real well. Um, we held a pre-bid uh, conference on July 13th. We had about 30 bidders attend the pre-bid conference. And then the bid date was July 27th. So we received the bids on, on July 27th. Just uh, to, to kind of let you know the, the amount of people that we solicited. We solicited over 420 bidders uh, is what we solicited. The number of bid packages, which is the you know the different the different areas of, of um, where we where we bid out, was 25. We, so we bid out 25. Those were basically major packages because we had already gone through and bid out some of the um, the the toilets, temporary toilets, and stuff like that. So we didn't didn't include that as far as bid packages here. So we received um, 117 bids, and actually that's climbed a little bit. I think we're at about 120, 125 right now. Um, the bids that were received, the the major bids, the major categories: concrete. We had three bids, uh, steel, miscellaneous metals. We had six six bids, uh, framing, drywall, five bids, fire suppression, five bids, uh, site work. We had about five full bids on the site work. Uh, mechanical. We had we had three bids, three full bids. The electrical and plumbing is where we were a little light, and we had uh, we had about two bids a piece on on those, and that was. Uh, some of the areas that actually, quite honestly, we need to look a little bit harder at. Mechanical is where we have our biggest bust right now. Um, you know, we were, I think we had budgeted about 1.3 million for the mechanical, and right now we're sitting at about 1.9. Uh, so there were some changes to the documents from DDs to, to CDs. Um, however, we are working with Little and uh, CMTA, which is the uh, MEP engineer, to, to find out how we can, how we can get that back. Um, the low bidder right now has some pretty good ideas and wants to present some some options that he feels uh, can get us get us closer to where we were before. Um, the budget was was 12, uh, 12 point four million and that included the ODPs and and donations. I think the last time we came in, we said we were at about thirteen million. However, I know we wanted to pack back about another six hundred thousand for for FF and E, which gave us that twelve point four. Um, we're still continuing to, to go through the descoping process. Uh, the, the initial numbers that came back when we plugged those in, we were about 15 million. That's gone down now to about 14.5 million. And as we continue to go through this the scoping, uh, it's getting it's getting better and better. And then we'll start to really look at some of the VE options as well to get us closer to the budget. Um, uh, can I just say something? Yeah. And I think I've said it before, but I want to say it again. This is Neo City Academy. In the end, we cannot take this all the way down to bones. You know, it, ha it has to be to fit the environment that's that it's in. Understood. Understood. But but we also have to comply with cost per student I, station. I, I, I get it. I and get right it. now we are hovering just below that okay. maximum I get it. limit with FF and E and everything. Yep. You know, design and. So we're watching that very carefully. So important. Do if we come up with a number here for owner direct purchase, so we can identify the. I mean, come yeah. with that so yes. would, we have put a number to it, uh, Jay. <laughs> right now we're looking at Text about 180 thousand in tax savings itself. Um, so that and we haven't factored that in yet. That's. Three million dollars. 
$180,000 based on 6%. Based on 6% is about so where you're about where you're at. Correct. In owner direct purchases. Okay. Um, so that's currently, and that, I think that's a little probably on the conservative side. I think we can do better than that. But okay. right now, that's that's about 1.5% tax savings. We will do better. You think we okay. will do better. There we go. Just do it. Man. That's yeah. a 1.5% tax savings. You know, typically 1% is easy <coughs> to achieve. 1.5% starts to get a little more difficult. And as you get between 1.5% and, and 2 it, it really requires a lot of effort. What's working? Uh, on both sides, ours what's and What's working not, not so much in our benefit right now is the increase in the labor costs that we're Correct. experiencing. That's so 100%. there's a balance. You know, part of the work is labor, part of the materials. <coughs> we're getting the savings on the materials, but not on the labor. So as your percentage of labor it grows, is. it gets tougher. And of course, we've established goals of 30% for new greenfield projects, 20% for comprehensives. But as, as Mark stated, the labor costs are increasing, so that uh, it, it's a stretch goal. Because it starts to skew things a little bit. The um, just some upcoming dates: um, the uh, the GMP um, due to SDOC is uh, August 14th. So I plan on turning the the GMP over next week. Looking for board approval on August 21st. Which is what we were, uh, what the plan was, and then it, you know, so this our plans are to finalize the negotiations by the 17th, and, and we did receive approval to blue sheet this item. So we are, you know, uh, working daily, hourly, in in That's negotiating good. this and and getting to our, our budget, budget, so we can bring a GMP, a negotiated GMP, to you on the 21st. Um, as I mentioned before, that the the twelve the twelve point four we anticipated including the ODP savings into that, so that to get us to the twelve point four, that's how we we're getting there before that fourteen point four where we currently are does not include any ODP savings, doesn't include any any donations or anything like that at this point. Um, we do plan on uh, leveraging some of our uh, national partners, um, hoping to to get some. Some donations. Some of our corporate uh, partners are uh, Armstrong, Armstrong Ceilings, and uh, bringing them to the table. GE Lighting, um, Howarth uh, Furniture Systems, um, HD Supply, Whitecap, uh, Kone Elevators, Shaw Industries, and then Tiss and Krupp, and uh, seeing if we can get some good donations and some some sponsorships through through them as well through our corporate uh, partnerships. Please do it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Can we, I've got a can question. we leverage some I'll of these partners to, uh, <laughs> uh, go uh, ahead. Um, the uh, Tobin Laga High School. Yes. I know we've got some issues going on out there. Can you give us any kind of update on what y'all are going to do to get this yeah. thing over the finish line rapidly? Yeah, so it was we, uh, <laughs> the, the, the school itself and, and the, the buildings are all ready to, to be occupied. and. Students will get in, and the buildings are in good shape. Where we ran at the biggest issue was the was the site, and the amount of rains that we've had in June and July have absolutely killed us um, in getting the, the site ready. And where we've been most affected is is the fields, is the football field, the practice field, and the uh, and the baseball fields. And so um, we started when we started originally. We started with the practice fields, knowing that they needed to be turned over first. We went to the football fields, and then the, the baseball fields were, were the last ones to get to get sodded. Uh, we had an issue with, with an irrigation meter, which prevented us from putting any, um, putting any sod down uh, when we actually wanted to. Uh, but we worked through that, and then the biggest issue was, was the rains after that. And you know, we've, we've reviewed those fields, and we've looked at them. We've been out there about every week, it feels like, uh, recently with the team and it seems to be a drainage issue we thought it was a drainage issue however with the amount of rains that we've received it, it always appears to be a drainage issue however if we get two days of of dry weather those fields completely dry out so you know is it really a drainage issue is what we're trying to figure out now um, and then really a, a, a growing plan we've, we've discussed yesterday um, taking some additional soil samples uh, to come up with a with a good growing plan to get this moving as quick as possible. What we didn't want to do is just throw anything you know at it and just say. Originally, the, the the landscaper that we currently have wanted to just go ahead and finish his scope of work and put a certain real fine sand on it. Well, found find out that as we brought in some 
some more experts that it's not what we wanted. We wanted more of a coarse sand. So really just cutting ties with, with them on that field and moving on to, uh, to somebody with a lot more experience to do the growing process. And we've just had some experiences in the past where these things have drug out for years, and I guess my concern is we're going down that same path again. Whatever we need to do, I think we need to get a ride board. I don't know what y'all think. Yeah. I, I don't want to. Oh, I don't oh, want to half bake a bunch of stuff. Um, I don't want to be putting astroturf in this thing in two years because we're we've got a swamp out there for one point two million dollars. So I met the, with. Um, I know you're working with staff. I met with the team yesterday on site. Our team, as well as all the other stakeholders, and we came to um, an agreement that we all want to make sure that we really understand the problem first, and then develop a long-term solution that we're all going to be satisfied with um, for the long term, as opposed to band-aid this, band-aid that. It, it it kind of felt like we were spinning our wheels and potentially getting ready to throw good money after bad. So um, we've kind of pulled back. The team is doing soil samples, um, looking at some as built and surveying this week, um, working hard to try to get the baseball and softball fields to a point where we can check the grading and the, um, the as built And so then we're meeting again next Monday to kind of put all of that information together and, and come up with where we go from there. Um, we're very disappointed in the schedule. I think I've made that clear. Mm -hmm. And we darn sure better not be there a year from now when we're talking about Neo City. I think we've made that clear as well. But I appreciate the board's support and any additional uh, input that you guys want to provide. I think maybe in the next, I don't know when our next facilities workshop is, but maybe our next meeting in two weeks, um, maybe we should give you five minutes for kind of an sure. update. I mean, I hear things that we've got it over compacted. Is that ever going to be able to be fixed or not fixed? Is it? Um, we never did the sales uh, soil test as we were moving soil around the site. To, you know, why wasn't that done? And we had we have done uh, we did do some soil testing, um, and it was a re recommendation brought back brought forward. But we'll gather all the facts and, and make sure that you know whatever whatever we do is the right thing to do, and um, and do an expedition. I don't know what y'all think, board? Yeah, on. no, I was going to comment on it. Um, Mr. Booth and I both were out of the school. Um, earlier and looking and walking and, and first of all of course the campus looks great and from design to construction and all the intentionality that went into it it's a very impressive campus and we're all excited about what it means but I think it's uh, it would be an understatement for any of us to say we're, we're quote unquote disappointed that we're not crossing this finish line with nothing but celebration and being able to bring our teams on the fields right away um, you've been a valuable partner for the school district and we want that to continue, you want that to continue, and it's in everybody's best interest. My question is just very direct. Are you guys 100% committed to making sure that we have the fields exactly the way it's supposed to be, exactly the way we expected, and as quickly as possible? Absolutely. No doubt about no it. No questions whatsoever. No questions whatsoever. Because to Mr. Thacker's point, I have no interest in <clears throat> you know, piecemealing things together, regretting it, or looking back, whether that's six months, a year, or five years from now, and going, oh, man, we didn't do it the right way. So. Just being really honest with you, that is my expectation, and I hear that it's your expectation as well. And I think anything short of that won't satisfy me or potentially the balance of the board of the staff. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll show you this. I mean, you know, one of the things the board that we you really need to think about going forward is, you know, this was this is a great location for this high school. We need the high school. There's no doubt about it. But you know, and we had this conversation briefly about something else recently in the last half hour between Dr. Pace and. The, Everything pretty much that's available on the north side of the county that you want to build on swampy. I mean, either was a swamp or still is a swamp. And, every, you know, we, we just, we, want, we don't want to get, get where we were with Celebration High School again. I think that the fact that maybe we are not on the same schedule we'd like to be for whatever reason might work in our favor to make sure the field is done right for, for the long term. So while we're disappointed things aren't done, you know, are, aren't ready, I'd rather take the time and get it done right and make sure we've got something more. We need to plan 18 months yeah, in advance well, for it. Well, yeah, so, we just, celebration. We know we're just, swampy. I just want the record to reflect that they're being cooperative is not waiving our rights to hold you all accountable to deliberalism and time frames. Because I don't want the contract of walking out of here thinking that you are in any way at this point. Releasing those responsibilities. No, but, but no, not at all. But with yeah, anybody, I, with anybody, I'd also say, look, I'd rather do it right than do it fast. 
I'd rather have it done the way the contract called for it to be done up front, all right? And it wasn't. So now we're behind schedule. And all I'm saying is I don't want your comments taken out of context. We intend to hold the contractor accountable. Thank you, Frank. Everything and and we've been having weekly meetings with Gilbane. Gilbane has hosted those meetings, um, mostly on Friday mornings. And we've made it clear that, um, you know, we're going to hold you to the contract. And we're going to seek our reimbursement for our damages for having to move to an alternate location. And, and we accepted that, Mark. And yes, we understand. You have. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that the campus looks beautiful. I think a lot of the work, you know, <coughs> it was disappointing to drive up and see cutting concrete, some sod that's not laid. Uh, and, and look, there were some minor design flaws that were probably, you know, on our end, minor things. Um, like the placement of a long jump or something like that, right? So I get I get those things, uh, but again, the campus looks beautiful. But but I want to thank Mr. Krumbacher for clearing that up because we are going to hold uh, any contractor uh, up to the contract. And so, but but that doesn't change the fact that Gilbane has has been a good a good partner, you know, to the school district and a uh, greater Osceola community, and we certainly appreciate that. Agreed. That being said, the site does have four foot of fill. So it's Celebration High School, for example, they needed to have another two feet. Look, Celebration High School <laughs> was built in the swampiest part of the whole Celebration Swamp. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is people, a different people, site. People, people that have been there a long time understand we where Celebration was built. Finding 75 acres contiguous that doesn't have some low land on it is pretty yeah. hard. But that is an excellent <laughs> point. That's and you always give the lowest land to the school district. That's right. You know, that's that, right. That four foot uh, build in, in the athletic field areas gets us above the water table. And that was a big factor at Celebration High School. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we have that working in our in our favor. They call it Boggy Creek point, for a reason. It's more Mark. important to do it right. <laughs> but we, we've got we've got a good base to uh, mm. to expect success. Mm -hmm. No. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm glad. And 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 I and I know that we'll get this resolved. And we you will. Guys, will take care of it. Yeah. Absolutely. So we appreciate it. It's not naming it after Lake being open. <laughs> Oh, that lake. <laughs> we don't want it to be a lake. <laughs> right, we don't want the field to be lake. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. lake. I think we might have a partner, well, though, we once he retires from the school board, side. that can sponsor pond. A, uh, an athletic field. We'll put your name on an athletic field for $100,000. We'll call it, we'll call it Jay Wheeler Field. Dr. Joel LaRosa. <laughs> no. 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 No, we won't. It's, <laughs> talk to Dream like Builders. A million the Dream Builders. <laughs> to get your name on any property. No, talk to Dream Builders. Is that all we have, Mr. Clinton? Yes, sir. Dr. Pace? Yes, sir. All right, thank you, Mr. Great, thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. We'll be back at 530.